What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and another lovely day out here at Dover's Garage. It is really cold today. I mean really cold. Anyway, we're not worried about the weather. We're here to check out Red. Oh, hold on. I don't think I showed you this yesterday. Jeremy got the rear end back for his other car. Got the welded axle tubes, nine inch ends. Damn. It needs to be solid because it's going to get its ass handed to it by that dark 434 over there. So, yeah, it's got to be solid. Anyway, let's get on with it. All right. So, there she is. So, if you caught the video uh, last week where we got everything kind of cut out, let me just run you through real quick what we did. Cut out the inner fender aprons. Got all of those out and also have the scott rod panels they are in everything's kind of shaved up obviously they're just sitting there but um we got all the edges trimmed you can see they are pretty much ready to start filling and filing and sanding and repeating about a million gazillion times so the reason the car is still over here and it's not over there is because we got to get scott's car finished up um, because dragging the welder and all that garbage down here is going to be a major pain. So just holding off on that. But what I want to do today is kind of run you through what I'm doing as far as the engine bay, um, filling and, and just cleaning it up generally. So that's what we're about to do right now. All right. So before we go any farther, I want to take you back up here to look at uh, Scott's engine bay, just so you can kind of get a point of reference. I told you I was going to do it in that one video and I never did it. So um, when I'm filling the, uh, smoothing the engine bay, so you can see the coyote takes up a ton of real estate. So what can you actually see? This is the main part right here, the fender aprons, which I just showed you on my car. We've got those kind of roughed in. What else can you see? You can see the shock towers, all that. You really can't see anything below this pinch weld right here. I mean, like nothing at all. So I'm not really that concerned about it. On this side, same deal. You can see the upper parts of the shock towers, front sides too, but can't really see much back there. It's basically this area right here, this area right here. That's the main thing. All right, so you come back to my unfinished bay, which looks really bad compared to, <coughs> excuse me, Scott. So. What are we really going to focus on other than getting these panels in and smoothed and flushed? Obviously, all the Swiss cheese right here. Now, when you've got holes this size, you can just weld these up. You know, just take the welder and, and slowly fill it in, grind them down, and you're good to go. So those, those are really not a problem. Where you start to run into issues is when you've got holes like these. And then, of course, you got tons of them on the firewall and then you've got some larger ones on that side too the larger holes you can't weld in um, so you've got to do something else basically cover them or come in from behind and, and tack something in but what we're going to do with these larger holes is right here let's get you a little sheet metal and then metal bonding adhesive and basically what we're going to do is we're just going to cut and make just, you know, little mock-up panels. Everything is going to be flushed in anyway, so, you know, don't sweat that. But we'll just cover up, like, holes like this. We'll just make a cut out a little piece that covers this right here. And then same thing on this shock tower right here. We'll just cover all that up. And then, you know, we'll use filler, sand it, fill it, sand it, fill it. You get the idea. But that's going to take care of those larger holes. And then, of course, where the, the brake booster was and where the uh, 
engine harness came through the firewall we're going to do that one as well um, as far as up here most of these can be filled in now we're going to run into issues with these i don't know if i'm going to put this trim piece back in this is like the hood insulation seal right there um i don't it's not really very useful but i'm probably going to go ahead and put it back in there because i don't want to fill in all of those holes that's just going to add a ton of time ton of expense and i don't know i'm gonna talk to jeremy see what he feels like doing but i just don't feel like it's gonna i just don't think it's gonna be worth it anyway i'm rambling Let's move on. So the other thing I wanted to do, and I'm slowly adding more time, more expense, more everything to this build, but I was talking uh, I was talking to my buddy Mario, and he was like, don't forget to do the core support. So as you can see, like these holes, no problem, you know, just weld them up, grind them down, sand them, whatever, no big deal. These are a little bit bigger, and then of course, you got these right here. Obviously, that's radiator hole down, so I'm not concerned about that. So, we've got more holes, and I would like this to go ahead and be smoothed out too. And this is the reason, if you caught the video when I was talking about what I should do with the engine bay, this is the reason that I didn't want to do the engine bay, because I knew just as soon as I got started, more stuff would pop up that I want to do. It's like, screw it, we're already in here, let's go ahead and do it. And uh, that has already happened like two, three, a lot of times. And uh, so it, it, it has begun and I'm, I'm gonna have to like draw a line in the sand and say, okay, that's it, we're not doing anymore. And I think the line in the sand is probably gonna be that core support um, because it's the first thing you see when you open the engine, uh, open the hood and it would look really pretty, you know, pretty. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna have to level with you and be totally honest. I have access to a black dash for the interior. And the column's out. And so I'm seriously thinking that uh, maybe I go ahead and put the black dash in the car. It's in really good shape. But again, Things are spiraling, blah, 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 blah. I can't even talk today. Things are kind of spiraling out of control. As far apart as the, the dash and the interior is at this point and will be, you know, going through the build, swapping the dash won't be anything to do. Why is that a problem, you ask? The problem comes in because at that point, then I'm going to want to do everything else in black. And again, that's going to add more expense, more time, and basically just make the build take even longer. So, and and you know that once I do the door panels, once I do the, the, the console and all that, you know, I'm gonna look at the seats and be like, ah, man, the seats just don't work. And this is what I was worried about. This is exactly what I was talking about. It's getting out of control. And like I said, with the engine bay, I'm gonna have to draw a line in the sand. I die, die, I, ha, ha, God. It's like, do I go ahead and drop the dash in it while the column and everything else is apart and I can fool with the rest of the black interior later? Or do I just say, no, that's where I stop. I'm not doing any more. And we can screw with the interior next winter, something like that. I don't know, drop me a comment below. Tell me what you think because you know as well as I do that I'm just like you when it comes to cars. You're just like, yeah, man, just go ahead and do it and whatever. And this was why I was trying to be really conservative with the build and say we're just going to get the Coyote done and rolling and all that. 
and mess with stuff later and I'm I'm not. I'm just losing my total mind. So drop me a comment below. Should we go ahead and put black interior in the car too? I would love it. Oh god, black interior. God. Alright guys, so that's kind of where we're at. I can't unfortunately do a whole heck of a lot more because the car has to become immobile by dropping the K-member and all the front suspension and stuff to go ahead and start um, tearing into the engine bay as far as welding and putting the panels in and doing all the filler and stuff and it's got to be on the lift. So um, what Scott's done, which is coming along quite a bit and I'll have the first fire video of Scott's car very soon, um, then I can you know kind of make some more progress on mine but uh <clears throat> i mean it, it's not a big deal anyway you know we're only in january um well almost february crap uh but i still got to get more parts on the way and um you know figure some other stuff out but so it's not a big deal but yeah i mean we got got major engine bay work coming it's not going to be the most entertaining thing to watch as we sand and fill and sand and fill but hey it'll look good when it's done, especially with all those new parts from JLT. I cannot wait to see the final product. It's going to look epic. But in the meantime, guys, if you like this upload, please give me a big thumbs up. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Uh, if you've got any questions, anything you want to see, please hit me up. Happy to do it. Email is the best way so I can print them out and bring them out here and not get scattered brain. But that's what's up, guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And uh, I'll be back with you tomorrow. Later.